Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video. My name is Amata and I hope you're having an amazing day. As you can probably hear, I am definitely a little under the weather right now, just recovering from a cold, so I do apologise for sounding a little nasal, but we're not here to talk about that. We are here to talk about technology, and our first item of business is Zen 4 for mobile. Now, I'm sure we can all agree that all the recent leaks and, and rumours and whatnot regarding Zen 4 for desktop all hint at Zen 4 being really, really interesting, exciting, and a bit of a monster in terms of specifications and performance. And now we have some fresh information on the mobile SKUs thanks to Grayman55 over on Twitter. Once again, they should need no introduction and you can find their tweet linked below. So, according to what Grayman have to say here, we're going to see two main line of SKUs, Phoenix H and Raphael H. Phoenix H we're going to see 5nm Zen 4 of course, up to 8 cores, 16 threads, and the TDP is going to be under 40 watts. Whereas Raphael H of course we still see the same, 5nm Zen 4, but up to 16 cores, 32 threads, and over 45 watts of TDP. Now, as you may recall, this is not the first time that we've heard the Raphael nomenclature mentioned in the same breath as mobile, because Raphael is commonly used to refer to the desktop CPU series for Zen 4 Ryzen 7000 processors. And we saw a slide back in March of last year from Gamers Nexus which hinted at Raphael also being associated with the gaming laptop segment as well as mainstream performance desktop. So at least if the recent leaks and rumours are accurate, AMD are planning to repurpose their desktop chip for the mobile segment, which I think could be really, really interesting. And if these specifications from Grayman are true, even the mobile segment of Zen 4 is looking rather monstrous because you know for AMD as a company, the mobile segment is so important. It's a growing market. It's huge. You know, many of us are you know PC gamers, desktop gamers only. But desktop game, um, sorry, mobile gaming, excuse me, if, whether it's on just a normal laptop or like an ultra thin or something like that, is becoming more and more prevalent and is really crucial for you know companies like AMD and Intel of course and this is looking pretty damn promising but for the desktop we don't know yet if Raphael is going to be limited to 16 cores there as well um, it's a bit unclear at the moment obviously Zen 4 is quite a ways away but then we can all agree it's looking really really exciting and before we move on from Grayman here, we're just going to focus on one other thing where he had something to say about Zen 5. And yes, I know, Zen 5, I didn't misspeak there. He said, Granite Rage 3NM plus 6NM Zen 5, and then Strix Point 3NM plus 5NM Zen 5 plus Zen 4D. And at least one piece of that information we have heard before, there was a leak from HXL some time ago which showed Ryzen 8000 with all the information blurred out and then Strix Point Ryzen 8000 which is Zen 5 plus Zen 4D. So if agreement is accurate here, for the Granite Ridge part we're going to see 3NM plus 6NM for Granite Ridge Zen 5 and then Strix Point is 3NM plus 5NM Zen 5 plus Zen 4D. And before you ask, someone did actually ask Raymond already whether or not he meant Zen 4C rather than Zen 4D, and no, he, that was not a typo. It is indeed a separate thing from the Bergamo Epic uh, Cloud Optimized course that we saw announced at the AMD Accelerated event just a couple of days ago. But we're going to move swiftly on now from AMD to Intel as we have some leaks thanks to Momomo over on Twitter for the non-K variants of Alder Lake, because of course we know all about now the 12900K, 12700K and so on, but we have various leaks here for specifications for the non-K variants. Now unsurprisingly we do see the same core layout here for these parts, the main difference is in the TDP and of course the clock speed. And thankfully, Momomo did provide some helpful slides here, so you can see them on the screen and see for yourself that the 12900 has 2.4 gigahertz on the P core and 1.8 gigahertz on the E core, compared to 320 and 240 respectively on the K variant for the 12900. As for the 12700, we have 12700 and 12700F, of course. We see 2.10 gigahertz for the P core and 1.6 gigahertz on the E core, compared to 3.6 and 2.7 respectively and finally we see the most variation with this final slide here where we actually see a difference in the cores and threads 612 rather than 1016 that we saw for the 12600 now we do see the 12600 and 12400 f listed here on the other side of the slide 
and we see 3.3 gigahertz for the 12600 and 2.5 gigahertz for the 12400F unfortunately no e-core information on this one and of course we also see a difference here on the L3 cache 18 megabytes compared to the 20 that we saw on the full fat parts. But now we're going to move on with a couple of bits from Sony, the first of which is that both Sony and TSMC have officially announced today that TSMC will establish a subsidiary, Japan Advanced Semiconductor Manufacturing, and they're going to have Sony as a minority shareholder, and basically the initial technology is going to be 22 and 28 nanometer processes to address the strong global market demand for specialty technology. So again, this is not going to be for anything cutting edge, at least at the moment, but they are going to be working together on this new fab in Japan, once again with Sony as a minority partner. And speaking of Sony, well, there's a bit of bad news, unfortunately. I'd hate to be the bearer of bad news bears, but here we go. It has obviously been a bit of a nightmare, and that's obviously a massive understatement to get your hands on a PlayStation 5 of late, but... According to a report from Bloomberg, the Sony Chief Financial Officer Hiroki Totoki told investors that logistics and parts procurement for the PlayStation 5 has just become really, really difficult. And the company has reduced the PlayStation 5 production outlook for the fiscal year due to these constraints, because obviously if they can't get their hands on the parts, then they can't build the consoles. Fairly simple. Now, they did originally hope to deliver 16 million PS5 consoles by March of next year. Sony has now cut that number by 1 million consoles, which is a pretty crazy. Now, obviously, they're not going from 16 million to, like, 5 million or anything, but still, 1 million less consoles is pretty devastating when, obviously, they're already pretty hard to come by and getting hold of one even close to MSRP. I think, you know, to be honest, you would be considered a magician if you pulled that off at this point. And unfortunately, according to all expectations, the supply issues for the PlayStation 5 are going to remain throughout the entirety of next year. So, unfortunately gamers, there is just not much hope on the horizon for that one. And to further compound the bad news, just to end on a really feels bad man note, for those of you looking forward to the Steam Deck, it has been officially delayed by two months. It will start shipping to customers in February of 2022. And this is an official announcement. You can find it on the Steam Deck page. So this is not a rumor or anything of that kind, but it is due to, unsurprisingly, the global supply chain issues and material shortages. So they literally just do not have enough um, bits to actually make the Steam Decks to actually launch when they said they were. So if you were having to get your hands on these, you are going to have to wait an extra two months. But hey, it will hopefully still be on time for those of you wanting to play Elden Ring on the go, which is actually something I've seen talked about surprisingly a lot. Anyway, guys, that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, do remember to like and subscribe to stuff out a great deal. And I'll see you next time. Bye bye.